Microsoft has discussed buying code giant GitHub. That's a crazy headline, kind of. So I'm going to remain very skeptical, and I know there's a lot of people that have already, and I've participated a bit in this, the snarky jokes, the fun humor they're gonna come with it. Are we gonna get Git 365? Are we gonna get a subscription service? How is it all gonna work? Will it work? Or will Microsoft actually leave this thing alone and let it be what it is, which is a great repository of open source code? That being said, there's a couple things about GitHub that I wanna make sure are cleared up first. First, GitHub is not an open source product. GitHub is a code repository with lots of open source products on it. So that's something that is important because when you make comparisons to other Microsoft acquisitions or something that you know, you're afraid they're gonna close source, it already is closed source. So this is kind of just a company that hosts code acquisition if this occurs, if this rumor is true, which wouldn't surprise me too much if it was and let me explain a little bit why. So, over here in episode 256 of the Sunday Morning Linux Review podcast that I co-host with a few of my close good friends, uh, we have uh, Martin Woodward and Edward Thompson and talking about how Microsoft gets Git. And it was kind of a fun play on words. It was a great interview. And I want to start with who these two folks are. Now, one of the things we did when we went to Microsoft and did the interviews, we took a lot of flack uh, at the Sunday Morning Linux Review and got some hate mail right away because they started calling us the Sunday Microsoft Review, the Sunday Morning Microsoft Review, blah, blah, blah. And I, like I said, I think as technicians, we love snarky humor and we don't mind. We don't, we didn't mind a criticism when we get it. We, we, well, we were there. We went and did the Microsoft thing. Now, when we did these interviews, one of the things we tried a lot uh, to do differently was not talk about the product or maybe just what these people do at Microsoft. We want to know how much they were passionate about open source. Tell me a story of what got you involved in this. And some people had really good answers. Some people had less interesting answers. That being said, that kind of gauges and sets the mood and, and the way we think about things of how passionate they are about software and open source. And these guys are passionate about software and open source. You know, you look here at Edward Thompson, he was a senior software engineer at GitHub. So he came from GitHub and now works at Microsoft. And Martin Woodward, longtime Microsoft guy, but also big open source advocate as well. Both of these guys are passionate about open source and uh, they're very passionate software developers in general. Their uh, passion came through. This podcast was a lot of fun to do with them. It was interesting. And we talk about, you know, all the generalities of how things changed at Microsoft to even make this happen to them building it into their workflow. And Microsoft is heavily invested, if you didn't know, in the GitHub uh, workflow. So whether you like them or not, it's you can't deny the fact that they have a massive amount of repositories and they've done a lot to give back to the code, including the .NET, work, .NET frameworks and things like that that have uh, been put up on GitHub. So there are massive things that we kind of were shocked ourselves that Microsoft is open source. That being said, let's talk about a couple other Microsoft acquisitions and what happened to them. And the reason I don't want to use, well, LinkedIn as an example, is uh, LinkedIn, I don't know that Microsoft's really done much with it. LinkedIn was, in my opinion, not that great of a platform to begin with. Microsoft's acquisition of LinkedIn was undoubtedly just to have better integration with their Dynamics product. And from what we've seen them do with it, it's all kinds of integration help find people and things like that. The other side of, Git, uh, if, of LinkedIn is, well, I don't think it's all that great. And mostly I get spam more than anything else on LinkedIn. And most people I know kind of feel the same way. It's a place for recruiters to do that. So Microsoft's acquisition of them, not that interesting. Then people like to point out Skype acquisition. Well, Skype acquisition, once again, they took a decentralized product, centralized it, and a lot of people say that the uh, Skype has suffered from it. I kind of agree. I've not used Skype in a while, but I see a lot of people grumbling that it isn't like it used to be, which it, for years when I did use it, it was a really top-notch platform. So Microsoft decentralized it. You go back all the way to GitHub, they're not a decentralized open source product anyway. So it's already a centralized server. It's the question of whether or not Microsoft should be the owner or steward of this uh, GitHub versus some other company. Now, Microsoft has done things like acquired uh, Miguel Diacaza's company, uh, Xamarin. And if you're not familiar with uh, who Miguel is, an amazing open source 
uh, developer in the Linux community, founder of a lot of different things. Uh, the bigger things are going to be the Mono Project and the GNOME Project, which I'm actually running GNOME right now with Pop! OS. So, uh, Thank you very much for your contribution here, Mr. Uh, Miguel. But he works for Microsoft now. And this is a person who is absolutely passionate about open source. And this is where you can have some fundamental philosophy of, you know, do we just hate on Microsoft because they have closed source? Or do we celebrate people like Miguel, uh, Martin Woodward, Number Thompson for working there and being advocates of open source and we are seeing a change in the company because uh, they're a hard company to try to be on the outside going up against. Are they uh, bringing the cancer, as Steve Ballmer called it, to the inside of the company and generally reshaping it? I'm a very uh, optimistic person overall. I'm a skeptic when it comes to Microsoft and I'm not going to just openly hate on it because of everything they did in the past. And, you know, I don't give companies the agency to see that they as exist as some e force for evil, I instead look at companies are a amalgamation of the people that work there. So if they acquire GitHub and they have more open source uh, people pushing them towards that way, would that not make them better? This is where we can all be skepticals on this. Now, of course, if you want to jump into the snarkiness, I will leave you to uh, this link here. And this is the entirety of uh, the usual in the our programming uh, Microsoft discussion about GitHub. I've been reading through here. And there's people on both sides of the camp on some of the details about this. I don't know, like I said, which way this is going to go. I don't know if it's going to be overall good or bad. I will cautiously wait. I don't think we should necessarily, you know, all leave GitHub, which some people are calling for. The other thing is there's some discussion here whether or not this is a protection move. Would you want Oracle to buy them? Would you want Amazon to buy them? Do you think Google should buy them? The reality is if the company's up for sale and one of these larger companies can acquisition of them, we kind of have to pick which company should there. Well, we don't have to pick it all. We can just have opinions and argue about this and make our decision by not hosting our projects on there if we think they're not the right company. Uh, Granted, if you had to uh, make choices, I, maybe Microsoft's a better choice than or than Amazon. Um, way better choice than Oracle because uh, I'm not a fan of Oracle for a multitude of reasons that I won't get into now. So I don't think we should get the pitchforks out now. Uh, cautious skepticism, I think, is always important. Uh, we can hopefully this will all turn out for the better. Uh, maybe GitHub will not sell to them and they'll just get a new CEO and everything will be uh, happy and we can keep posting projects on there. That being said, GitHub is not completely open source, so there's that to take into account. So if you're an open source developer and you're used to using GitHub because it's the place where everyone is developing things, um, you know, do you switch because it's not completely open source to something that is more open source uh, based? I don't know. These are all kinds of philosophical decisions. What we'll still be discussing, you know, at a later date. But Microsoft is looking at buying them. I find it very interesting. I find it very uh, interesting based on our interview we did with uh, these two gentlemen here. So I'm gonna leave you the link to all these things so you can go and uh, read about this, and then you can join in the Reddit and have your snarky comments, uh, where I will be participating probably in snarky comments as well. <laughs> so, because uh, we're technician people, and I just sometimes that's kind of funny. Um, you know, is it gonna be Git 365? Will we have a subscription? Will I be able to delay my pull requests, or will they have to wait for an update? Will I have to reboot each time? I don't know. Will they Windowsize it? Those seems pretty unlikely. Um, although. I like the vision of Clippy helping me with code on GitHub. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds funny to me. I, I don't know. We'll just poke jokes at them for a little while. But the big picture stuff is I don't know that this is going to be the end of GitHub um, or that it should be the end of it. So Microsoft is changing this. It's always a wait and see. Uh, I won't make some assumptions that they're automatically an evil company and they're going to destroy all things they touch uh, because there is been you know contributions back to the open source community that are positive. And one of the things actually covered in this particular podcast is uh, zero days that these gentlemen helped uh, quash that were found in some of the uh, file systems. So um, that being said, um, they that is a positive contribution. Anytime they quash bugs, especially a zero day bug and uh, some of the stories in here, those are good things. So there are positives that come out of the overall of this. Um, so I'm always trying to look for more positives and negatives. It's never a perfect world. It's never the way we want it. Uh, but we can all at least do our little part in contributing and making it better. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback or if you just want to say thanks.
leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.